Hello dear children, how are you? I hope you all are in the best of your health. I welcome you here in the science class and today here we are going to discuss part 2 of chapter 10 of class 10th science that is light, reflection and refraction. Children, in part 1 of this chapter, we have studied that light traveled in a straight line. We have studied how spherical mirrors form images, why convex mirrors are used as rear view mirrors in vehicles, what is the sign convention for the mirrors. Now, in this part of the chapter, we are going to discuss about refraction of light refraction through a rectangular glass slab, refraction through spherical lenses and image formation by spherical lenses, uh, laws of refraction, refractive index and sign convention by spherical lenses and power of lens. We are going to discuss all these topics in detail. So let us start with refraction of light. Children, have you ever noticed path of light? What happens when light enters from one transparent medium to another? Does it still move along a straight line path or change its direction? Let's understand it with some examples. Take a pencil and keep it in a glass of water. The light reaching you from the portion of the pencil inside water seems to come from a different direction compared to the part above the water. Similarly, a pond of water appears to be less deep than it actually is. A coin placed under water in a glass appears to be raised. When a thick glass slab is placed over some printed material, the letters appear raised when viewed from the top. Why all this happen? Let's look the first case. When a pencil is partially immersed in water and held obliquely to the surface, it appears to be bent at the point where it enters water. Actually, light comes from different directions enter our eyes and that is why pencil appears to be bent. All these examples shows that light does not travel in the same direction in all mediums. It appears that when traveling obliquely from one medium to another, the direction of propagation of light in the second medium changes. This phenomena is called refraction of light. Let's take one more example. When we place a coin in a beaker filled with water, the coin appears slightly raised above its actual position. Light coming from the coin first travels in water and then travels through air and reaches our eyes. Here, due to refraction, it appears raised. Dear children, now let's understand refraction through a rectangular glass slab. For this, fix a sheet of white paper on a drawing board using drawing pens. Place a rectangular glass slab over the sheet in the middle and draw its outline. Let us name the outline A, B, C, D. Take four identical pins. Fix two pins say E and F vertically such that the line joining the pins is inclined to the edges A, B. Look for the images of the pins E and F through the opposite edge. Fix two other pins say G and H such that these pins and the images of E and F lie on a straight line. 
remove the pins and the slab join the positions of tip of the pins E and F and produce the line up to AB. Let EF meet AB at O. Similarly, join the positions of tip of the pins G and H and produce it up to the edge CD. Let GH meet CD at O dash. Join O and O dash. Children, you will notice that the light ray has changed its direction at points O and O dash. Note that both these points O and O dash lie on surfaces separating two transparent medias. The light ray at point O has entered from a rarer medium that is air to a denser medium that is glass and the light ray has bent towards normal. At O dash the light ray has entered from glass to air that is from a denser medium to a rarer medium. The light ray here has bent away from the normal. Children, here EO is the incident ray, OO dash is the refracted ray and O dash H is the emergent ray. You may observe that the emergent ray is parallel to the direction of the incident ray. Why does it happen so? The extent of bending of the ray of light at the opposite parallel faces AB and CD of the rectangular glass slab is equal and opposite. That is why the ray emerges parallel to the incident ray. So, dear children, Refraction is due to change in the speed of the light as it enters from one transparent medium to another. As we know that light travels in a straight line if travels in the same medium. But the speed of light is higher in a rarer medium than a denser medium. Thus, a ray of light traveling from a rarer medium to a denser medium slows down and bends towards normal. When it travels from a denser medium to rarer medium, it speeds up and bends away from the normal. Dear children, now let's understand laws of refraction. Refraction of light on going from one medium to another takes place according to two laws of refraction. According to first law, the incident ray, the refracted ray and the normal at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane. And according to second law, the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction is constant for a given pair of media. It is also known as Snell's law of refraction that is sine i by sine r is equals to constant. This constant is called the refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first. Let's understand refractive index in detail. The extent of the change in the direction that takes place in a given pair of media is expressed in terms of refractive index. We have learned that light travels with different speeds in different media. Light travels fastest in vacuum with speed of 3 into 10 raised to the power 8 meter per second. 
the value of the refractive index for a given pair of media depends upon the speed of light in two media. If medium 1 is vacuum or air, then the refractive index of medium 2 is considered with respect to vacuum. This is called the absolute refractive index or only refractive index. It is represented as n. If c is the speed of light in air and v is the speed of light in the medium, then the refractive index of the medium and m is equals to and m is equals to speed of light in air by speed of light in the medium and m is equals to c by v. Children, the refractive index of water is 1.33. This means that the ratio of the speed of light in the air and the speed of light in water is equal to 1.33. Dear children, now let us learn refraction by spherical lenses. You might have seen watchmakers use a small magnifying glass to see tiny parts and people using spectacles for reading. The glasses used in spectacles and that by a watchmaker are examples of lenses. Children. A transparent material bounded by two surfaces of which one or both surfaces are spherical forms a lens. The lenses are of two types, convex lens and concave lens. A lens may have two spherical surfaces bulging outwards. Such a lens is called a double convex lens or convex lens. It is thicker at the middle as compared to the edges. Convex lens converges light rays, hence are called converging lenses. Whereas concave lens is bounded by two spherical surfaces curved outwards. It is thicker at edges than at the middle. Such lenses diverge light rays and are called diverging lenses. Children, lenses also have center of curvature and principal focus as in mirrors. The central point of a lens is called its optical center. The principal focus of a convex lens is a point on principal axis to which light rays parallel to the principal axis converges after passing through the lens. Whereas the principal focus of a concave lens is a point on its principal axis from which light rays originally parallel to the axis appear to diverge after passing through the concave lens. A lens has two foci. The two foci of lens are at equal distances from the optical center, one on either side of the lens. The distance of principal focus from the optical center of a lens is called its focal length and it is represented by small f. Now let us see image formation by lenses. First, we will take convex lens. Place a lighted candle in front of a convex lens and a screen on other side of it. Lighted candle should be placed far from the focal length of the lens, say at infinity. You will see that a sharp clear image of the candle appears on the screen. The image is real and inverted in nature. Now why real? Because we are seeing the image on the screen and the images which cannot be obtained on screen are called 
virtual images and which can be obtained on screen are called real images. Now take the candle from infinity near to the lens at different positions like at 2f1, beyond 2f1, between f1 and 2f1 and observe the images on screen. You are seeing that in all situations the image formed will be real and inverted. But as you bring the candle near the lens size of image increases gradually. For last condition when we place candle between focus and optical center the image increases in size and now we cannot see it on screen. Now the image is positioned on the same side of the lens as the object and is enlarged, virtual and direct. In this way with the help of this table we can find nature, position and relative size of the image formed by a convex lens for various positions of the object. Let's do it. For the image formation by convex lens, I have here a convex lens. In the lens stand a screen and a candle which act as an object here. Now as you are seeing I have placed this lens between the candle and the screen and there is a bright part on the screen. This bright part is the image of this candle. Now as we take the candle far away from the lens as you can see at infinity you observe a very sharp image of this candle. This is the image of the candle which is inverted, very small and real. Now why I have said real here? Because we are able to obtain the image of the candle on the screen and the images which can be obtained on the screen are called real images. Now as we take the candle near to the lens, the size of the image increases gradually but still it is inverted. Now the size is increasing regularly. Now as we place the candle very near to the lens as we can say between the optical center and focus of the lens here on the screen there is no image of the candle and you can see the image of the candle in the lens now it is bigger in size and virtual and direct. Why I have said virtual here because in this situation we are not able to obtain the image of the candle on the screen. So in this way we obtain different images of this object by placing it at different positions from the lens. Dear children, now let's see image formation by concave lens. Children, when an object is placed in front of a concave lens, it forms a diminished or small virtual and erect image irrespective of the position of the object. Let's observe it by doing. To obtain the image from the concave lens, I have a concave lens in the lens stand, a screen and a candle which act as an object. Now children just look at the candle and the screen. I have I am placing the candle near the lens and far from the lens but in any situation there is no image formed on the screen. You just see that the image of the candle is there in the lens and here it is very small, virtual and direct. Irrespective of the place, anywhere I place the candle, you will see the image of this candle in this lens and not on the screen. It means the concave lens forms erect and virtual image of an object. It is 
very small in size. These are called virtual images because here we are not able to obtain the image of this candle on the screen. So concave lenses forms virtual erect and very small images of the object. So concave lenses forms a small virtual erect image of an object. Sign convention for lenses. Children, for lenses we follow sign convention similar to the one used for spherical mirrors. All measurements are taken from the optical centers of the lens. The focal length of a convex lens is positive and that of concave lens is negative. Light rays always falls on the lens from left hand side means object is always placed at left hand side. Now let's see lens formula and magnification. For lenses, lens formula gives the relationship between object distance u, image distance v and the focal length small f. It is 1 by v minus 1 by u is equals to 1 by f. Magnification. The magnification produced by a lens is defined as the ratio of height of the image h dash and the height of the object h. It is represented by letter m. m is equals to height of the image h dash by height of the object h. m is equals to h dash by h. Magnification produced by a lens is also related to the object distance u and image distance v. It is m is equals to h dash by h is equals to v by u. The negative sign of the magnification and height shows that the image is inverted and real. It is formed below the principal axis. Whereas their positive value show that the image formed is virtual and direct. Children, as you know, when we feel some discomfort in reading, doctor advise us to use spectacles. For this, first we go to doctor for checkup and then he advised us to use a lens of specific power. Can you guess? What is the meaning of power of lens? Children, the degree of convergence or divergence of light rays achieved by a lens is expressed in terms of its power. It is represented by letter P. The power of a lens is reciprocal of its focal length. The power P of a lens of focal length small f is given by P is equals to 1 by f. The SI unit of power of a lens is diopter. It is denoted by the letter capital D. One diopter is the power of a lens whose focal length is 1 meter. The power of a convex lens is positive and that of a concave lens is negative. Why it is so? Yes, because focal length of convex lens is positive and focal length of concave lens is negative. Dear children, now let's revise the main points of chapter. When light enters obliquely from one medium to another, the direction of propagation in second medium changes. It is called refraction of light. 
a light ray traveling obliquely from a denser medium to a rarer medium bends away from the normal. A light ray bends towards the normal when it travels obliquely from a rarer to a denser medium. Refraction of light occurs due to change in the speed of light in different mediums. The refractive index of a transparent medium is the ratio of the speed of light in vacuum to that in the medium. Power of a lens is the reciprocal of its focal length. Dear children, now let us discuss some questions. I hope that you know the answers. Question number one, which of the lenses would you prefer to use while reading small letters found in a dictionary? Convex lens or concave lens? Yes, the answer is convex lens because it acts as a magnifying lens. Question number two, when a light ray travels from water into air, where does it bends? Towards the normal or away from the normal? Yes, light ray bends away from the normal because air is rarer than water and light rays bend away from the normal as they move from denser to rarer medium. Question number three, which spherical lens is also called diverging lens? Absolutely right. Concave lenses are called diverging lenses. And last question, if the power of a lens of your spectacle is plus 1.5 D, which kind of lens is this? Yes, exactly right. The lens of your spectacle is a convex lens because focal length of a convex lens taken in positive and that is why the power of the lens is in positive. So dear children, now you are able to understand what is refraction, how refraction occurs, what are laws of refraction, how spherical lenses form images, where we can use different kinds of spherical lenses. So, I hope you find the chapter very interesting. Do read this chapter again and keep practicing science at hope. Keep smiling, keep studying. Good day.